for joining us on today. We pray that you would stand to your feet and help us uplift the name of Jesus. Our song this morning is, He has done great things.
morning, good morning to the day of church. Let's once again be in the house of the Lord. Our scripture reading this morning will come from 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. This is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we bless your name today. Lord, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you, dear Master, for allowing us to be in the service one more time. Lord, we bless your name today. We magnify your name. We lift you up, Lord. You are great, you are awesome, and you are worthy, dear Master, of all praise. You are our creator, Lord. You are our sustainer. Lord, we love you, and we depend on you, and we can't make it without you. Now, Lord, we ask that you would bless this service on this day. Lord, you would make it what you would have it to be, Lord. We pray that your word would go forth with power, dear Master. Your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding, dear Master, to your, your man as he brings the word this morning, dear Master. We ask that you would bless that word as it goes forth, Lord. We ask that you would give it power, dear Master, that it would go into our hearts and come out into our lives, Lord. We ask you to bless those who are in the assembly this morning, the Master. We ask you to bless those who might be listening to your Facebook live. Lord, bless keep each person, dear Master. Watch right over and strengthen us, Lord. Lord, give your word power, dear Master, Lord, in our lives. So that we might be better servants of you, dear Master. These other blessings we ask you to pray in the strong name of Jesus and for his sake.
chapter 1 and verse number 12 through verse 21. Daniel chapter 1 verses 12 through 21. I just want to remind you we serve the awesome God. Amen. He is amazing. He is the the anointed God. Daniel chapter 1, beginning at verse number 12, when you found it, you will discover these words. Please test your servants for 10 days. 
and let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our parents be examined before you and the appearance of the young men who eat the portion of the king's delicacies. And as you see fit, deal with your servants. So he consented with them in this manner and tested them 10 days. And at the end of 10 days, their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacies. Thus the servant took away their portion of delicacies and the wine, and they were to drink and gave them vegetables. As for these four men, God gave them knowledge and skill and in all literature and wisdom, Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Let me talk about fasting for favor. Fasting for favor. Fasting for favor. We are about to enter into our 21 day fasting period where we will not partake of meat of any kind. We will not take of wine. Somebody said, oh my goodness. <laughs> we will not take of any alcoholic beverages, but we will give ourselves to fruit and vegetables. Well, why are we doing this? And why do we do this year after year? It's simply because we are fasting for faith. Okay. You see, some use fasting as a dietary means. This may happen, this may be a benefit for you for weight loss, but really, 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 that's not the purpose of fasting. Fasting is not so we could get our bottle shape back. It is not so we can get our V back. Fasting is that we will gain favor with the Lord himself. Fasting gets rid of the toxins that's within us that cause us to be weak in our physique. Fasting puts us in direct contact with God because we ought to be concentrating on what God has to say. And every now and then, in the midst of a pain, in the midst of hunger, fasting will cause you to pray to the Almighty God. Yes, Therefore, the reason why we do this is because Jesus says, some things come but by prayer and fasting. And things that we have been praying about for years, things that we've been trying to get over, we ought to take it before the Lord in prayer in the midst of our fast. I said to you Wednesday evening that when you pray, you ought to come to God by honoring him and asking that he uh, be glorified and that he be magnified and that he would keep the glory. And we do that by first giving honor to God and not just coming to the mic and say, you know, in the Baptist church, we got it good. <laughs> Well, we will come to the mic and say, giving honor to God, the head of my life. <laughs> now the rappers have picked it up and, and the, the, the entertainers have picked it up and they stand up after they've done all of their democracy. They come before the mic and they say, giving unto God, the head of my life. Well, That's not how we give it to the Lord. We give it to the Lord by honoring him praising him and magnify him. And we're doing it on a regular basis. We're glorifying his name regardless of what we're going through. You see, when we fast, Jesus says that when you fast, you don't put on a sour face and go before men and let them know that you're fasting. You don't announce the fast and let everybody know that, girl, this fast is really wearing me out. 
Sisters, you, that's not the reason for you to fast. The fast is for you to have direct connection with God. The fast is for you to, to put aside some things that you usually do so you can get God's attention and God can speak to you. I said to you Wednesday night that prayer is a dialogue where you're talking to God and God is talking to you. And if that's going to be the case, you got to get some things out of the way. Ice cream got to go. Chocolate chip cookies got to leave. Potato chips, Cheetos, and Doritos have to go. You have to make sure that the fat back is not in your green. Somebody's hurting this morning. At midnight tonight, at midnight tonight, that's the time that when it's not Sunday and it's not Monday. At midnight tonight, we begin our fast and we are bombarding heaven to ask God to hear our prayer. God says that if my people who are called by my name would just humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, pray and call on him, then we will hear from heaven. And he will forgive our sins. And he will heal the land. Don't our land need healing? Is it true that our land need to be changed? The landscape need healing. The people of the land being healed need to be healed. The attitudes of the land needs to be healed. The mindset of the land needs to be healed. We are calling on God for the next 21 days, and we are calling on him every day. But as a, as a corporate unit, we are calling on God to heal the land. If you got a bully in your life, now is the time to take it before God. If you got a person that's running you rapping, now is the time to take it before God. If you got a person that needs to be in the corner of the rooftop, now is the time to take it before the Lord. Fasting is that time where we set aside quality time. Many have chosen a particular time of the day. But I'm saying to you, whatever you do before the day is over, spend some time alone with God. Talking to God about all the situations that you've been going through. And it's what you see happening before it gets to you. There's a storm over the ocean. And the storm is headed this way. We need to make sure that we tell God about the storm. So God can fix the storm before it gets to us. God has a way of blessing us in spite of our condition. In spite of what we've been through, in fasting, we will see God like never before. It's because, it, it's because you're making sacrifices. It's because that you're not eating the delicacies. But, but you're eating fruit and vegetables. It's because you're not drinking your white or your red wine. But you're drinking water. Well, somebody is hurting in this room today. Somebody is hurting us listening to me today. But the fact of the matter is, when you sacrifice to get in touch and in tune with God, God will give you favor. So we come and pray. We come before the Lord, realizing that he's the only one who can fix it. The, 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 the scientists declare that the coronavirus will be with us the rest of our lives. They have declared that it will be like the average flu where we will have to take another injection year after year after year. But God can fix it. God can hold back the reins of the devil. God can make it happen when the scientists cannot predict it happening. We need to call on God. Every young person, every child, every youth, Every senior saint needs to spend some time alone with God. Jesus says that we need to go into our secret closet. And after we get in the closet, we ought to shut the door. Now, he's not talking about an enclosed room. You may choose a room in order to filter out all the other distractions. But he's talking about when you get alone in your heart. 
So he says that prayer is private and prayer is personal. You ought to spend some time along with God. Our religion has done God and have done ourselves a terrible, a terrible disfavor. Because we have neglected prayer. You probably you call a prayer meeting, you may get two or three. You call a musical, you can't find a chair in the house. It's because we have been neglectful of prayer and fasting. And preachers, all right, talk about prayer, but when you start talking about fasting, <laughs> you better check yourself <laughs> because you better read this. We look at the book of Daniel. We find three Hebrew boys and a fourth one in Daniel. When we look at the book of Daniel, we find that King Nebuchadnezzar has invaded Judah. And in the midst of his invasion, he brought some articles back with him. Now, in the midst of bringing back some articles, he brought back four Jewish boys. And when he brought back these four Jewish boys, I want to let you know there was deportation. In other words, he changed their location. The devil, the devil is after us. The enemy wants to destroy us. The enemy wants to change us. And he wants to change us, first of all, by changing our location. You see, it's, it's a problem. It's a problem when a person grows up in the ghetto and become rich and famous and forget from which he or she has come. There's a serious problem when your location changes and you forget about how you grew up. All right. That's why I don't mind telling folk every single day of my life, I grew up on Wayne King's plantation. And growing up on Wayne King's plantation, I realized that my daddy was a sharecropper. And it's because of growing up on that plantation, daddy being a sharecropper, we never owned anything, but look what God has done. It's for that reason I don't mind telling my story. All right. okay. First of all, the devil wants to change you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, Sister Richard, the devil wants to change you. The first thing he wants to do is change your location so you can forget where you came from. All right. All right. The next thing he wants to do is change your diet. Change your food, change the way you eat, change what you eat. The devil wants to change us. Then he wants to change our attire. Look at our young people. They don't know if they're going or coming. They wear it like that because somebody else wore it like that. They carry themselves because, because they saw somebody else carry themselves like that. The devil wants to change your attire. He wants to change your attire. Then he wants to change your culture. He wants to change your culture. He, he, he wants to make sure that you understand that what God blessed you with, you don't have to stay that way. The devil wants to impress upon you that you got to look like them instead of looking like what he made you. Let me just park right here. Let me just park right here. African American women trying to get rid of what they got while other folks trying to inject stuff in them to look like you. All right, now say that. You better take pride in your wide nose. You better take pride in your flat nose. Take pride in your 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 mega size real in because other folks are paying millions and thousands of dollars to get like you. Take pride in your big lips. Because they fit in thousands just to get an injection in their lips. Yes, they and then after six months, they got to get six, six times more injections. Yes, Lord. But God has already injected in you what he wanted in you. He has made you just like he wants you to be. They want to change. The devil wants to change. And he want to make you think it's worth changing your culture. Yeah. He wants you to talk like that. Yeah. He wants you to act like that. I told a young, young lady the other day, I said, the BMI is for Caucasian women. <laughs> Brother Miles, the body mass index mm -hmm. at 24 or below mm -hmm. 
A woman is frail. Mm -hmm. But society wants to change your culture, Sister Jackie, so you can look like them. Uh -huh. And if you don't look like them, then you are, you are all messed up in the mind. You are running you are trying to look like them. Let me tell you, the fact that the matter is your bone structure is not like them. Sure I know that's right. And if, if you get like them, if you fit into that BMI, Sister Davis, guess what? You're going to have a big head and a little bit of body. <laughs> so the devil wants to change your culture. Yes. Then the devil wants to change your music. He, he, has, he has done an excellent job of changing our music. The devil wants to change our music. Brother Dixon, he wants to change our music where everybody can understand it. The devil wants to change our music where, 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 where we used to talk about love and happiness. We used to talk about peace and, and, and prosperity. We used to talk about how beautiful a woman is. And now the devil has changed our music to make them drop it like it's hot. Yeah. Yeah. The, the devil wants to change our music until the point that, that it rouses people up. Yeah. Yeah. The devil wants to change yeah. the music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The next thing the devil wants to do is you want to utilize your physique. Look at, look, at, look at chapter 1. He changed their location. Then he says, in verse number 4, bring me only young men. And when you bring me these young men, make sure they have no blemish. Make sure these young men are good looking. He says, make sure these young men are gifted in all wisdom. Whatever you do, don't get the worst of the worst. Bring me the best of the best. He says, whatever you do, when you get these young men, bring the ones who possess knowledge and they quick to understand. When you get these young men, make sure that they are qualified to be trained in the king's palace. Let me just stop you right here and tell young men, especially young African-American men and young uh, brown men, Men, let me just say to you, the devil knows that if he can get you, he can get the whole culture. The devil knows that the life blood of any establishment is found in the men. That's why we got to get men in church. We got to get men motivated for church. We got to get men motivated to stay with the Lord. Because if there's a man in the house who honors God, the devil has no place there. That's why, sister, you have to encourage men. You have to tell them every little thing. If you can't find them, look under a rock to find something. Got to encourage them. Because for years, and this is not a pity party, for years, for years, men have come home and they got the same thing they got out there, they got it when they got home. The devil wants to change our culture. The devil wants to change our music. The devil wants to utilize our physique. The devil wants the Mandela warrior. The, the devil wants the strong men. The devil wants young men so they can crowd their mind with junk. They want young men, the devil wants young men who are brilliant, who are able to understand and have wisdom. So young ladies, Young men, if you have children that are boys, make sure you have a conversation with them that God has beautifully and wonderfully made you. Great is the handiwork of God. You don't have to be like anybody else. You can be yourself. Because the devil wants to utilize his physique. He wants him to spend more time concentrating on his, his six-pack in his pet than he consecrate, and consecrate on wisdom and knowledge. Young men are going to pots by the thousands because no one has told them who they are in Christ. That's right. The devil wants to utilize and exploit your appearance. 
He wants to exploit how you dress. He wants to exploit uh, how you look. He wants to exploit how you sound when you talk. It bothers me. Every time there's a problem in the black neighborhood, the news reporter always finds the one who cannot put together a two-line sentence. And, and they, they shove a mic in their face. And, and they always get the one that's still in their bed clothes. They always get the one whose still hair has been twisted from the night. They always get the one who has holy uh, a nightgown on and flip flop on. And they make sure they shoot the camera at their face, at their waist, and at their feet. They want to make sure that this culture is painted in such a way that it's not worth putting funding into. The devil wants your appearance. And the devil wants your response. The devil wants you to be quiet when it's time to speak up. And he wants you to speak up when it's time to be quiet. The devil wants your response tormented. The devil wants to, to make sure that you don't have the right answer. We see it on our streets every day. Young boys, young girls get pulled over by the police. Doesn't matter if they're black or white. You better train your children how to react and how to be pleasant. We have to train our children. We have to train our children. Then they watch and say one of the most valuable lessons his mama taught him was to say yes and please. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Please, sir. We have to teach, go back to the basin and teach children how to be pleasant even when they're upset. Right. Even when they're pulled over because they're black while dry. Yeah. Even when they're, they're confronted because they're black while walking. Uh -huh. Even when they're de denied an opportunity because they are black while they are quiet. Mm -hmm. We have to teach them how to understand pressure and we realize that this world is not fair, but God gives us favor. That's right. That's right. God has a way of giving us favor. God has a way of blessing us in spite of us. God has already set you up for a blessing, young man. All you got to do is keep pressing forward and watch what God has for you. The devil wants to attack your responses in order to change your worship. When we, when we continue to read through, doubt, that through, through the book of Daniel, we will find out, we will find out that, that Nebuchadnezzar really, really wanted them to bow down to his structure. He's, he's not really after their appearance per se. He's really after their worship. Because the devil is after God. See, the devil re remember how God threw him from heaven like a boat of light. He's really after God. He's really trying to get back at God. We are just a, we are just pawns in the process that he's trying to make sure he uses for us to be tormented. So the attack is on your worship. I say to you today, don't stop worshiping the true and the living God. Don't give up worshiping him. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter what excuse is on the line. Don't give up your worship to the almighty God. And get over this thing about I can worship him at home in my dining room. Well, you haven't been worshiping at home in your dining room all this time. What makes you think you're going to start doing it now? Let me tell you, you have to do something with Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 through 25, where it says, don't forsake the assembly of each other together as some do, but come together and worship. All right, come together and praise. Mm -hmm. I contend that some people couldn't wait till the pandemic got here. They had a decent excuse now. I mean, I got something. I got something now that I can I can just throw back at the pastor. But I say to you today, if it's a good enough excuse for God, I'm satisfied. If you can justify it all before God, then who am I to question it? The devil will attack you. And you're gonna need the body of Christ. I had to tell the sister the other day, I said, you know. You know, I've, I've been in council with members of Fountain of Praise, been in council with members of, of Joel Osteen's church, 
Lakewood. I've been in counsel with people of Pastor Abby Hilliard's church. I've been in counsel with XYZ Church. But it seems as if I'm good enough to counsel, but I'm not good enough to pastor. It seems as if I can get involved in all of their personal appearances, all of their personal in interests, all of their personal effects, but I can't just stand on Sunday and preach to them. Don't you know when someone's counseling you and somebody's in your mix that's more closely related to who you really are than standing up on Sunday morning and Wednesday night? We have to get to a point where we realize the devil wants to have us. Look at, look at verse number four. These are special men. These are different men. They're young. They're robust. They got nice physiques. I mean, they are not in Chippendale. They, they, they are not on the stage. But the fact of the matter is, they were strong, good-looking, intelligent men. I want to say to you today, the devil wants the best. The devil wants the best. The devil wants the brightest. And the devil wants the blessed. I said again, the devil wants the best. The devil wants the brightest. The devil wants the best, the blessed. And the reason why he wants the brightest, the reason why he wants the best, the reason why he wants the blessed is because if he can get the cream of the crop, he can get the whole society. Have, have you looked at the news lately? Have, have you seen? You don't have to get to CNN. You don't have to get to ABC. You don't have to get to CBS. You don't have to get to any major network. Just, just look and scan it. Have you ever looked at the news and wondered to yourself, so these are the people that's going to be leading these great United States of America when I'm dead and gone? Mm -hmm. Have you ever wondered how we need to be spending time now putting something in young people now so they can live on this earth when we are out of here? We have a legacy to lead. And as we lead a legacy, we need to make sure that the best knows they're the best. The brightest know they're the brightest. The blessed know they are the blessed. And we have to do it right. Put something in somebody else. Put something in somebody else's child. Put something in your neighbor's child. Because God is dependent on us. I mean, it's, it's 32 degrees. And it goes up to 80. I mean, we set more records <laughs> than ever before. <laughs> Don't you see the handwriting on the wall? Don't you see something is going on around us? Don't you see that Jesus is coming back? Don't you see that we got to leave here? And most of us who are listening to me have more, more years behind them than they have in front of them. All right, all right. Then I get an amen. Because I, I, I listen, I, I've been doing my Bible listening, you know. And the one thing I, I learned in my Bible listening is that God has a limit mm -hmm. on how long man can live. That's right. I'll let you look at it. God has a limit. Mm -hmm. He says, as from this point on, man will not live more than 120 years. And there's a woman that was living 114, a woman, a man that just died living 112. But guess what? None of them have reached. 121. So we must contend there are more years behind us than there are in front of us. And we have to make a difference now. And the only way to make a difference is to have favor with God. And one of the ways to have that favor is through prayer and fasting. So the king get these boys over in the land of Babylon and he he wants to do something special for him. He wants them to be the special part of his court. But they got to eat his delicacies. Daniel is a negotiator here. He says to the chief of staff, wait a minute. Let us eat what we want to eat. Let us eat what we're used to eating. And I guarantee you that we'll come out looking better than the young men you have here. He said, man, I can't let you do that. The king will have my head on a platter. He will hang me. He will behead me. I can't do that. He goes on to say, I tell you what, give us 10 days. 
And the Bible says, after 10 days of eating vegetables and drinking water, they came back looking better, and the Bible said they were even better than the young men. It says right there, verse number 20 says, And all manner of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them 10 times better than all the magicians and the astronomers who were in his realm. He found them better. He found them fat. He found them better off. Their minds were sharp. Fasting increases the mind sharpness. Fine, fasting increases your health. It washes out all that stuff. Let me tell you, if you grew up eating some of the stuff I grew up eating, and I know some of you did, if you grew up eating some of the stuff I grew up eating, let me tell you, that stuff still with you today. Yeah. It's still just sitting there. It's going nowhere. It's just, it's just sitting there. So fasting gives you the opportunity to flesh it out, to wash it out, to irritate it. It gives you a chance for it to leave your body. And it gives you a chance to become a regular king. Young folk, if y'all don't understand what that is, ask somebody if you know what they're telling you. We don't give away castor oil and cod liver oil anymore. But it gives you an opportunity to become regular again. Not only should we become regular in our physique, we ought to become regular when it comes to God in our spiritual walk. Fasting gives us an opportunity to become regular with God. God knows what we need before we ask for it. Fasting connects us and brings us into the face of God. Today, I want to let you know that these boys, verse 17, as for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill and in all literature and wisdom. And, and Daniel had understanding of all visions and dreams. And this is after. Let me just say to you, the devil can't steal what you already have. That's why we tell children, get an education, get a good attitude, get a good personality about yourself, get some good manners, and, and the devil can't take what you already have. Hang in there, but trust God. When everybody else is doing their party, you trust God and stay with him. If you call the nerve, just guess what? Ten years later, they'll be calling you boss. You, you'll call a nerd today. Five years later, they call you supervisor. What you need to understand, you are different. You have favor with God. God has beautifully, wonderfully made you. Great is the hand of works of God. Every woman in this room, every woman listening to me, needs to understand, it doesn't matter if he ever tell you who you are or not. You are special in the hand of God. And because God made you a woman, just be a woman. Stay a woman. Keep your perfume as a woman. Keep your walk as a woman. Keep your dress as a woman. Keep your hair as a woman. Just be a woman. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. Man, it's an honor to be a man. Man, I'm so glad God made me a man. It's just something awesome about being a man. But check this out. It takes a spiritual man to lead a spiritual woman. Children are dependent on us. Women are dependent on us. Schools are dependent on us. One school had, had, had dropouts. One school had disciplinary problems. And all of a sudden, one man had an idea. And he infiltrated the school with men. Men who understood boys. Men who understood what boys were going through. He infiltrated the situation with men. And now those same boys that used to be in fights and, and getting kicked out of school are in school. They're learning. They're graduating. And they're giving those same men high fives. All right, all right. You know, you can't call it an invasion now because of 9-11. You can't use the word invasion. But prior to prior to 9-11, we created a man's a all men dash club at the Imani School in Houston. It's a private Christian school. 
We created, and that night, after I got through making my spiel, 77 men signed up. I looked around the room, I said, well, it's not 77 men in here. One woman said, I signed my husband up. <laughs> and so, we had what was known as a dance invasion. Once a year, we would take men from the community and men from the households, and these men would infiltrate the money school. Men would assume the role as teachers, the role as janitors, the role as the principals for the day. And men would take off work for four hours. Men would take off work for, for eight hours. And they would come into the school and they would assume the role. The daddies would assume the role for one day. And that school turned around. That was in 19... 98, and now over 5,000 men have gone through the same program. And now the school is what is called Creme de la Croix or Creme de la Creme. In other words, the school is on the top of the list. It's only because God is looking to find a man. Ephesians, uh, Ezekiel, rather, Ezekiel 22 and 30 says, and I look for a man to stand in the gap between God and, and the people that I can put in charge of these people. All right, all right. It's right there on the wall in men's, men's, men's classroom now, the, the storage room, the men's classroom. It says that God is looking for a man to stand in the gap, to plead the case between God and the people. God is looking for men who can make things happen. And men, don't count yourself out. You are special before God. Don't shut God out. God is calling you to do a great work, but the devil is trying to change your location. And next thing they did, they changed their names. You know their names are not Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, don't you? The, the enemy changed their names. The, the enemy wants to change your name. The enemy wants you to think you're somebody else that you're not. The enemy wants you, your name changed because he knows that there's power in the name. All right. There's strength in the name. There's hope in the name. The enemy wants to change your name. Yes. Yes. You know, I've always, I've always been a token. Young man, I've, I've always been a token. I, I, I grew up in Mississippi, right? Went to an all white college, right? Mm -hmm. So in, in the year of, of 1985, Tom Blue and I were the only two African Americans graduating the whole electronic department. I didn't mind being a token, brother Ma. It's all right being a token. They can call me what they want to. I, that doesn't make me what they call me. That's right. I can call the N word when I graduate. I mean, a tip that had been a tip to run me off the road, but I graduated. That been a tip to shut me down in class, but I graduated. Let me tell you, forget about what they call you and concentrate on who you are. All right, now. That's right. I remember, I remember sitting in, a, I remember putting sitting in a professor's room, and as I sit there in the room on a Thursday, see there was tests every Friday. So on a Thursday, he would review the test or he would re review some of the questions that were on the test and he would give you one, two, three points as you participate. And see, Tom Blue had to be out every other week because he and his sister kind of rotated this, taking care of their mom who was sick. So I was sitting, Tom Blue and I sit right in the, in the front of the room. Right in front of, at that time, was a blackboard. <laughs> we would sit right in front of the room and we would take notes. So when Thursday came, I would gain points. And when the next Thursday came, Tom Blue would gain points so we could get extra points on our grade. And I never will forget, I was sitting in the front of the classroom, and then um, I, was, I was burning up that day. I mean, I had, I had stayed up all night. I was, I was jamming that day in math. I was on it. I was on it. And all of a sudden, the teacher walked past me, went to the back of the classroom, and started questioning the guys in the back and giving, giving them points and leaving me out. Let me tell you, I wasn't intimidated a bit. I was looking forward to graduating. 
I didn't make a ruckus out of it. I didn't, I didn't go tell anybody on him. I just listened and I observed what they're doing. People are making decisions about your life, and you're not even aware of them making decisions about your life. But your attitude determines your altitude. That's why fasting is important. The Bible says that Daniel pleaded his case. He said, I don't really, I don't really want the delicacy. Of the king. You see, children are getting fascinated with what the king has to offer. They're getting fascinated with music. They're getting fascinated with physique. They're getting fascinated with appearance. They're getting fascinated with the culture. They're getting fascinated with the diet. They're getting fascinated with the attire. And they're getting fascinated with the new location. But when you walk with God, you don't have to let any of that fascinate you. I, I, he, he may not have given me extra answers on the test, but when it came to the test, I was ready just like they were, simply because even if he wouldn't give me one, two, three uh, points on the test, I was listening to what they were saying back then. So when the test came up, young people, I just wrote it down on the test. And I got a better grade than they did because they was playing around and wrestling up back there. I was listening. Young people have to get to a point where they just listen. That's right. That's right. Don't fight about everything. Just listen. When it comes to fasting, we have to listen to God. Mm -hmm. Look at what it says. It says Daniel had an understanding of visions and dreams. We'll find out later on, as, as we walk through the book of Daniel, you'll find out that, that the king wanted to know what his dream meant. The astrologers didn't know. All of the musicians didn't know. But Daniel said, no man can tell you. But there's a God in heaven who can tell everything, O king, what you have dreamed. When we depend on God, and I'll let you go, when we trust in God, when we wrap our belief in God, when we put our faith and our hope in God, God will give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding regardless of our age, regardless of how long we've been on earth, and regardless of what we know. He did it for us, and he'll do it again. The Lord that we serve, he is a jealous God. We should have no other God before him. We ought to come to him and, and worship him. The enemy wants to change our worship. The enemy wants us to bow down before a golden a golden statue. The enemy wants us to bow down before a wooden statue. The enemy wants us to bow down before an ugly man. The enemy wants to get our attention, but we got to keep our attention focused on God. That's what Jesus did over 2,000 years ago. My Lord and my God. He kept his attention focused on his mission. We got a mission to meet. We got a goal to reach. We got a people to serve. We got to make sure in 2022 we don't get sidetracked. We don't get loose focused. We got souls to save. Yeah. For the Almighty God. Yeah. And when we ask the question, yeah. what does this dream mean? Yeah. We got to tell men, women, boys, and girls. No man knows the dream. No man understands. But there's a God in heaven who's an omniscient God. He knows everything. He sees everything. He does well with everything. He is a sovereign God. And he knows everything. We don't know anything. It's what God has put in us that we know. Jesus kept his focus over 2,000 years ago. My Lord and my God, he died on a stub hill called Calvary. Oh, yes, he did. He took a tree out there. Marched up Calvary's hill. My Lord and your God, Jesus the Christ, he died a day. He took his own cross. Marched up Calvary's hill. He died. They hung him high. They dropped him low. They stretched him wide. He died a day. On a stone hill called Calvary. He kept his focus. He gave up the ghost. Yes, he did. They took him off the cross. Made him in a bottle too. It was a bottle too. Because he didn't need it too long. It was a bottle too. Because out of that third day morning. Out of that third day morning. He got up with all power. And heaven and earth is That same Jesus is available to us today. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father. He's making intercession for us. When we confess 
confess our sins. He said, God, give them another chance. And that same old Jesus, one of these days, he will catch a cloud right back in here. That same Jesus that caught a cloud and he got out of here. That same Jesus is going to catch a cloud. He's coming back in here. It won't be a BMW. It won't be a Mercedes. It won't be a Lexus. It won't be a Ford. It won't be a Chevrolet. It will be a cloud. He's coming back again to get a church without a spot on wrinkle. Are you ready? Are you going? I'm on my way. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. The one who gave his life on the old red cross. He died for you. And he died for me. And he's coming back again. And one of these days, he's going to crack the sky. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us who remain will be caught up with him in midair. And the Bible says we will forever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. God, we honor you. God, we praise you. God, we magnify you. We say hallelujah to your name. We bless you, Father God. For you are God. You're the one who gives us favor. You're the one that heals us. You're the one that keeps us. You're the one that blessed us. You're the one that feeds us. You're the one that quickens our thirst. Lord, we thank you for Jesus. Songwriter said, I thank God for Jesus. I thank God for Jesus. I thank God for Jesus in my soul. I thank God for Jesus. I thank God for Jesus. In my soul. You can't tell me about it. I know too much about it. I thank God for Jesus. Do you thank God for Jesus? I thank God for Jesus. The righteous son of God. Thank God for Jesus. If it had not been for him, I would not be here. I'd be sleeping in my grave. But Jesus made old death behave. Hallelujah to the Lamb. He gave me another chance. He woke me this morning. My eyes flew wide open. I was able to put one leg out of the bed and another leg on the floor. I thank God for Jesus. He is the one who makes a way out of nowhere. I didn't deserve it, but he gave me another chance. And for that, I say hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we glorify you. Oh, we magnify Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. There may be somebody listening to me today that don't know this Jesus that I'm talking about. This is your opportunity. This is your chance to get to know him. The door of the church is open. You can come you can come for salvation. You come for a Christian experience. You can come by letter. The Spirit of God says come. If you never trusted Jesus as your personal Savior, you can do that right now. Don't wait. Don't tarry. Next Sunday is not promised. You can be saved right here. Right now. The door is open. The invitation is extended. Will you trust him? Will you trust Jesus? He's trustworthy. Come on to Jesus. The door is open. The door is open. Come on, come on to Jesus. Come on.
Almighty Jesus. Come unto Him.
time, Lord, there are those who participate in our service that we really appreciate. But I don't want to be guilty. I don't want to be guilty of omitting anyone who participate on a volunteer basis. We have some people that we want to recognize today. Two of them are not present, but one of them is present. I'm going to bring up Brother Kevin Whitmer. Kevin Whitmer. always is, you ought to try. <laughs> so, brother, we can't pay you for your volunteer service. Musicians demand a whole lot of money, but our brother Kevin Whitlock, no one in this room knew I was going to do this. I know because you're so known that you saw on my desk, I had a piece of paper that said KW. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't ask me what it was, but for two months I've been having that KW with these gifts wrapped up in it on my desk. So I am giving you this contribution and it's not a payment. Just want to recognize you. Come on over this way, little bit. Just want to recognize you in front of everybody. We appreciate all you do and thank you for volunteering. As I said before, musicians are expensive. One musician interviewed with us said he wanted a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars a week. Not, not, since the rich not a thousand dollars a month, he won a thousand dollars a week. And I said, hey, get off the organ, walk out that door, because that's not where we are. So, brother, I want to thank you for being so kind and for, for being a part of our worship service. And thank you. Tell your wife, I didn't know what y'all talk about at home. So. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for volunteering. Thank you for what you did. In our prayer time, we are continuing in prayer for um, the Galvan family. You notice that they are not here. Brother Ice Moore. And Sister Moore is not present. We're going to be lifting them. Sister Lillian Darrington is going to be lifting her in prayer. We're going to be lifting the family of Sister Carolyn Berry as they go through bereavement. We're going to pray for Brother Nash Carter. We're going to pray for Brown Baptist Church and Pastor Bartholomew Moore. And we're going to pray for Miss Linda Rodriguez and the passing away of her husband. We're also praying for Nicholas, the son of Miss Vivian, Arthur Hart, in our prayer time. I want to ask our visitors to stand. Thank you so much for being here with us, Sister Ferguson. Sister Ferguson is here. Thank you so much for being here. I think your daddy named you, didn't you? Your daddy named you? Uh-huh, yeah. Tell us your first name. Ronicia. Say that again. Oh, Ramicia, okay, I'm, I'm almost there, Ramicia. Thank you so much, Sister Ferguson, for visiting with us. We, we enjoyed having you here. I want to give you a phone call today to see how your experience was here at the New Beginning Church. So thank you so much for being our honored guest here today. Won't we stand to be dismissed? Thank you for your mercy and your grace. 
We thank you for this privilege of worship. We thank you for our visitors. We thank you for those who are listening. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us to worship you. We come now praying for Nicholas and Pastor Bartholomew Roy in the Brown Baptist Church family. We're praying for the Galvan family. We're praying for the Hall family. We're praying for the Darrington family. God, we're praying for Nash Carter and his family. We're praying, Father God, for the Berry family. We're praying for the Rodriguez family. Lord, we ask you to touch them. We ask you to bless and heal them. Be comfort. Lord, we, have, we know, Father God, that you are the only real and only true God. We honor you, Father God, during this week of prayer and fasting. We pray that you keep us strong. We bless, we bless you for giving us the privilege to stay focused. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to bless us to understand the real meaning of this fast. That we will give to others. That we will be blessed by you. That we will talk to you and you talk to us and we will listen. That we will move upon the visions and the dreams that you give us. And that we will obey you in all our doing. Now to him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Amen. Amen. Amen.